A false social media post has been widely credited with sparking the UK's worst riots in 13 years. It does reflect how the internet can increase the potential for disaster. So how can governments approach this threat in a digital era? CNA's Rebecca Matteo explains. With 3,400 followers on social media site X, this news platform may not be the most influential. Also, many thought on 29th July, a single inaccurate post about how an immigrant killed three children in the UK town of Southport was viewed more than 2 million times. It was taken down less than 24 hours later. But by then, the narrative had spread like wildfire. Unlike what was suggested, the alleged killer was not a newly arrived migrant, but a local teenager. But the damage had been done, leading to the UK's worst riots in 13 years. An expert says this chain of events would have been impossible without the internet, where users are subject to an echo chamber effect. You're seeing the same memes, the same jokes, uh, the same political message online, and you feel that you're not alone. And that situation can, you know, that is well spread. All the fear, all what you're fearful of um, is near, so you should act. Equally is the speed and scale at which false information can spread. And right now, all the people, the rioter, are reading people writing from Cyprus, from the United States, from uh, France right now. And we cannot stop that of going on. So uh, we will have to manage that. Uh, I don't know how the government will manage that, but it will be a great challenge in the future. The UK recently passed an online safety bill that will give the government power to fine companies 10% of their global turnover if they are found to have exposed users to illegal content. Such content includes pornography and those that relate to racial and religious offences. UK politicians are now mulling over toughening the laws even before the legislation has taken effect in light of social media's role in the recent violence. Similar concerns over the misuse of social media exist in Singapore. It's why there are now laws that enable the authorities to direct social media firms to prevent access to harmful content. This includes posts that contain sexual violence, terrorism and those that may affect racial and religious harmony. There's also POFMA, Singapore's version of a fake news law, which lets the government point out and clarify falsehoods. I would say that these measures would act as a deterrence to a certain extent, but we do see a fair bit of innovation, unfortunately, in the misinformation landscape by the perpetrators themselves. So, for example, in the current uh, landscape where we're seeing rapid developments in AI technology, uh, we see how AI technologies are being used to produce deep fakes and cheap fakes uh, on scale, right? So we see uh, large scale dissemination of uh, deep fakes, which has an implication on people's perception of reality. Singapore is considering specific ways to tackle AI-generated misinformation, including a temporary ban on deepfakes, particularly as the general election draws closer. But experts believe more can also be done to tackle the issue higher upstream. For instance, recently the government has provided some support to the founding of a new research centre, the Centre for Advanced Technologies in Online Safety. And through that centre, I think funding support will be given to different organisations, both from the private sector as well as the people sector, to develop solutions to empower users of technology, but also to develop technologies that can detect and um, counter the spread of online harms, including misinformation. 
Dr. Soon suggests there is also a role for the local mainstream media. By avoiding political polarization seen in other countries, the media here remains a trusted source of information. And the data backs this up. According to the Reuters Institute, trust in Singapore's media has risen from 43% in 2022 to 47% this year, putting it in third place in the Asia-Pacific.